Welcome to 7.3C podcast. Now this is just a continuation of the empirical formula stuff we were doing last time. And we're going to start with a practice again just to get you going. And then I'm going to talk about molecular formula, which is really uh, something that we want to focus on. Here's a third one. So what I want you to do is pause this video, try this problem by, your, by yourself, and then I'll put up my solution. So take a minute and do that right now. Okay, hopefully you did that. If you worked that out, this is what you got. All right, notice the ratio 1.5 right here to 1 to 2.56, okay? Now, if you have a 0.5 and a 0.5, the way to get rid of that is to times everything by 2. And so 1.5 times 2 is 3. That's why we have over here C3. Um, 2.56 times 2 is 5, so there, there's our empirical formula. Hopefully this is making sense. Really, really useful thing. Well, the, the next phase of this, we found percent composition, we found empirical formula. But what we really want to do is find out what the real formula is, the um, molecular formula. Sorry about this, I'm searching all over the place. Here we go. All right. So let me erase some of this stuff. But but let's say we're we're trying to find this chemical, and we do an empirical formula problem, and then what we get is we get something like this right here. We get this CH2O. But the the chemical we're studying, or looking at the percent, is actually glucose. Well, how do we get to the point where we can figure out from that percent composition and find an empirical formula what uh, the real formula is, or the molecular formula. Well, what we do is generally you will be given information where they tell you what the molecule weighs. And in this case, I've got an example right here. In this case, they're telling you that the molar mass determined by experiment of this molecule was 180.18. But if you look up here, the empirical formula is CH2O. Well, if I find the weight, the molar mass of CH2O, which happens to be this right here, 30.03, I know that the, the empirical formula is, or less, I should say this, I know the molecular formula is some multiple of the empirical formula. So it's almost like what we're doing is we're going in reverse from what we did the first time where we, where we uh, reduce those down. So if I look at 30 and I divide 30.03 into 180.18, all right, if I do that, I know that I find out that, that goes into it six times. So that means the molecular formula must be six times the empirical formula. So six times CH2O gives us this right here. Okay. It's almost the exact opposite of what, well, it is the exact opposite of what we were doing before, where we were taking this and we were reducing it down to CH2O. So let's look at a couple problems that are typical for, for this kind of question. Look at this. The empirical formula, now they've already given us the empirical formula, which is kind of nice. We don't have to figure it out. The empirical formula is C3H6N2. The experimental molar mass is 210. What's the molecular formula? Well, I know that the molecular formula is some multiple of this thing right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the weight of C3H6N2. Turns out to be 70 grams per mole. All right? Well, 70 grams per mole goes into 210 how many times? You're right, 3. So that means the molecular formula must be 3 times this thing right here. So C9, H18, N2. Oops, pardon me. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? So there's the molecular formula. All right? Try this next one. Pause the video. Try it out. See what you get. And we'll, I'll go over it in just a second. Okay, hopefully you did that. Uh, I've got a molar mass of the molecule of 282. I'm going to look at this. Here's my empirical formula. I'm going to 
add up nine carbons, 17 hydrogens, and one oxygen. And when I do, I get 141 grams per mole. Okay? Now you can see that 141 is twice, or pardon me, is half of 282. So that means that the molecular formula must be twice that. So the molecular formula would be C18H34O2. Very, very simple, right? The important thing about this is understanding that the empirical formula is something we can find from the percent composition, and it is the simplest formula. It may be the molecular formula, but it might not. Okay, so let's try one more. Ooh, look at this problem. We get the joy of finding the percent composition and then finding the molecular formula. So what I want you to do, pause the video, find the empirical formula first, then find the molecular formula, and then we'll, I'll show you the work. All right, hopefully you paused the video. If you did, this is what your work should look like. I took the grams of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I changed the percent to mass. Then I changed the mass to moles. And then I divided by small. And notice here, there's no, net, there's no need to time still whole. So I got an empirical formula of C5H6O. They tell us up here that this molecule weighs 164.2 grams per mole. So I had to find the weight of the empirical formula which was 82.12. Well, 82.12 goes into 164.2 twice. So the empirical formula is that right there. All right. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, you should feel a sense of accomplishment when you get these problems done because this is a good problem for you. <clears throat> if you have any questions, again, like always, please come see me and uh, we'll do a few.